Hi there, folks, and welcome to another episode of Michael's Backyard Marina. This is not a shop rag, this is a lens cleaner. <laughs> Put it in my pocket like a shop rag. I had some audio problem at the beginning of this video, so that's why I'm jumping back in with a fresh intro, and then we'll jump into what, I'm what I've done and, and going to do. This is the gimbal housing disassembled. In this video, you're going to watch me disassemble this and some of the things and difficulties I had disassembling it. And uh, I would like to say it was easy, but it's not. There's some few things. Had to get the welder out on a couple things, and on one thing is particularly, I guess. Had to get the heat out to break some bolts loose. I really sympathize and empathize with people that have to work on this particular outdrive. I'm not sure this should ever be allowed in salt water. Maybe they have a salt water version. You guys that live on the coastal waters, let me know. Do they have a salt water version of this back in the 70s and 80s and 90s when they were, you know, putting car engines in boats, basically? But anyway, I'm actually going to, I'll be honest with you, as I'm editing this thing and looked at some of the video footage this morning and realized my sound was KO'd on, the, on, a, on this intro, I uh, realized that I'm going to probably have to watch my own disassembly video to remember how it all went back together because there's lots of parts and pieces. Uh, that's all there is to it. So... Without further ado, let's jump into the video and let's watch me take this apart because uh, I need to watch me take this apart because the next thing I'm going to do is be putting it back together because I need to get this back on the back of the big blue because right now it has a, a gimbal housing size, size hole on the back of the boat that I'm going to turn into two smaller holes uh, to possibly keep varmints out of the boat until I get everything back together. All right, enjoy the video. Thanks for watching, guys. And don't forget to like and subscribe if you enjoy what you're seeing. Now, as you can see here, this pivots right here. This is the on these pivot points right here, bam and bam, are the only thing that hold this thing here in place. So it's kind of hard to think about that your entire outdrive and pressure and push on your boat is going through these two pins right here on each side. That's it. Where's the rest of the thrust going? Well, it goes right here. You see this pivoting? There's a pivot. Where is it? There's a pivot down here. There's a pivot up here. Two more pivot points. So that's why they call it a gimbal, right? It goes this way and it goes this way. Let's get in here and we're gonna take this apart and assess some stuff and see how much further I need to go to take it apart. And we'll go from there. But first, right here, I'm gonna get you in tight to see this. So you don't miss it right here there's a little thing right there if you don't take that out these pins will not come out these they go through they look like a little aluminum nail that goes through a pin through the hole in a pin and on past it and then it is bent over a little bit so you're going to get behind it straighten it out pull those out and then you can work these pins out these pins are also threaded and i'll let you know what size thread it is i'm trying to remember but uh, you can thread a bolt in there and you can actually bead on that bolt a little bit and, and pull them out from each side. So we're going to do that now. Now the primary reason for me putting this on this wooden stand is so I've got something to stabilize it and I'm not trying to wrestle this thing on a workbench or some kind of tabletop. So I'm going to, I'm going to sling this all the way around and take a look. Need a flashlight I guess. Okay, looking down here, it looks like that nail's bent up. Let's see if we can manage to uh, get the screwdriver behind here and kind of get a piece of it. Doesn't take much to bend it. It's like I said, it's aluminum. Thank you. 
once you get it started you can grab a hold of it and get her pulled out of there just like that that's all it is then when I put it back in I take a hammer and kind of flatten it out a little bit so it goes in easy now we'll do the same thing on the other side get a visual I spent a lot of time cleaning this thing up too before we got to this point guys and gals because it was uh, somebody bent that one in flush Let's see if I can get in there with a little screwdriver and kind of get it weaseled out bend it down a little bit maybe I don't think my little pick's going to be strong enough to get at it, but we'll see. Ha! Huh, pick's got a little more poop in its shorts than I thought it had. One advantage you have when this is in the boat doing this is the steering wheel can be turned and hold it, hold this in a position, both left and right for you. Fine, once you get it started a little bit, it comes out pretty easy. First, you can grab the edge of it and just tap on something. Just like that. Now, what size threads do you think those are? Ooh, looks like a fine thread bolt. If I had to guess, Quarter twenty. Let's see if we got anything. Well, I didn't have a quarter twenty-eight, but I had a quarter twenty. It just started, and if they're not tight, apparently those will slide right out for you. Will I get us lucky on this side? Cross your fingers. Oh yeah, came right out. I will get me some quarter 28 bolts in the future just to make my life easier. Now, this would actually come clean out of here. Only thing that's holding it is rubber. But the shifter cable, it's still doing shifter cable things here. So what I like to do on this end, I'll show you. Like to do, can do, will do, whatever you want to call it. You got the little square thing sticking out here that pinch on the cable. And you can back those off. And see that there slides right off. See that's what that was pinching on was that inner cable there. The cool part is I should be able to yank on that end and pull that right on through. Since I'm not using this shifter cable, you know, uh, is one thing, but you can be careful and kind of straighten this out a little bit. But you start getting this thing to fray out and you won't get it back in. Will it give it up? Will it do what I think it'll do? Oh, come on, baby. 
Wow. I really should just come right out of there. Let's do let's use a little shock and awe here. I'm gonna put my crescent wrench around the around the cable base here and just tap on it this way. Let's see if we can get it to move. Because that can even work. It's amazing what a little shock would do versus just brute force pull. There we go. Cable out. Now the cable itself seems to be in alright shape. The one thing we don't want to lose is this little guy on the end here. This will, this will go under our new cable. So I'm just going to coil this up like this and just hang on to it for when things start needing to go back together. Now that that's free, there's no cable or anything. The only thing holding us together now is rubber boots. And normally you can take the rubber boots and just uh, unscrew them where you can get to them but since I'm replacing them I'm gonna go after them with a knife and we're gonna see if we can just carve it down out of there and the other one's pretty the top one's pretty much tore in two as it is Now the only thing holding it in here is this rubber hose that holds the, that feeds the water from this area up into this pipe right here to, to, for the engine. I'm replacing that as well because, you know, it's as old as the rest of it. And if you go to this much trouble and don't put, replace all three of these boots, you're wasting your time. Will that cable come through there? I think so. Oh, uh, well, if I take the canut off of it, set this right over here. So now we can take this off of here. Like that. That little rod right there. You saw that sticking out of this end. Now this cable should come all the way through, just like that. And this is what it looks like in here. You got your boot, your boot, your boot. This is the little boot. Now what you'll see here is there's a hose clamp that you can get at right through here. Hard to see. right down in there above this boot I don't know if you can see that or not but we'll take that off first and then there's another hose clamp where is it it's coming out from the bottom so to hold this on there's a hose clamp back here that's coming at it from the bottom and there's another hose clamp that's coming from the top down that you can't even get at you can't it's bad I don't like it but this is all very awkward very all this stuff is oh there's a shim there's another shim that was on the inside of each one of these I didn't see that before it's like a little uh, fibrous type bushing I'm gonna go ahead and see if I can get this boot out of the way I gotta rotate this all the way this way Nope, yeah. You get at it from the bottom. Sorry if my head's in the way here. Let's 
See that just came right off. Now it looks like I can get at this one pretty easy. You guys remind me about how this is going back together because we're going to go after this one now. It's a little bit of a weird angle, but it looks like I can get, I can easily get a socket on there. Let's see if I can get to this one on this side now. There again, with a swivel in the socket, I'll be able to get at it, I'm pretty sure. Now I've got my 516 socket with a little swivel. And if the swivel is too floppy, wrap some electrical tape around it. It'll make it a lot less floppy for you. Let's just see if I can get in here and get something to happen. Yep. Now I can just rotate that right around and like it's nobody's business. Once it's loose enough, let's see how glued on this one is. Should be able to get to this one too. Yep. So as you can see, this one on the back is going this way. I can get through here. The one on the top, I can get through here pretty easy. Now the question is, can I get it pried off of there? I'm gonna go at it from the inside here. See if I can break some stuff loose. Oh yeah, just work your way around. There we go. That's free. And that one came right off. Now the next point of interest in here is this gimbal bearing. Hear that? Thing is, can you hear that? Wow. That was done. That's races run. So the difference between what I'm doing here now and what would be done on the boat is the fact that I can stand up and do this. <laughs> and uh, that's all there is to it. Now there's a big snap ring in here. And you can buy a pair of snap ring pliers like this pretty reasonable at the Hobo Freight Store. And they fit. They're big enough. Well, it was. Fit on my other one. What's going on? Ah, uh, the panel fit. It's just this body here is a little bit too close. Hits against that lip. I'm going to go sand these off a little bit. Somebody might just say it right now, you just voided your warranty. I don't care about warranties. I want a tool that works and these were cheap enough. Oh yeah. Oh, come on. Almost had it. Hang on there. Coming for you, snap ring. It's a heavy duty snap ring. There's no joke about that. There we go. Snap ring removed. Whew. This is what winning looks like, folks. Now with the snap ring out of there, we can get this gimbal bearing out. And they have a puller for that. And I have a tote here called Mercury Outdrive Park Kit. Park and Kits. 
What I do have though is a brand new bearing. Yep, that's how they're supposed to sound. No sound. You guys just sit here and carefully watch. All right, here we go. Tell me if it moves, guys. Cause I can't see that side from this side. That was nothing. Look at that. So all that welding I did wouldn't have done any good anyway because it has this kind of band on it. I thought this bearing might be a little different than the other, but it's exactly like it. So, tappy tap tap, slight hammer were to work too. Uh, I couldn't get in behind it with my, I don't have the puller to get behind it, so that's how I did that. So that bearing came out pretty decent. Yeah, not everybody has a welder, but uh, you know, there again, I did, so. There are bearing pullers that you can get in there that expand, and I don't know where mine's at. I'm almost confident I bought one, and I know exactly when I find it, because this isn't something I do every day. It's when I'm not looking for it, and right after I'm done with this job. That's when I'll find it, I'll guarantee you. As I'm sorting through, oh, the catastrophe I call a shop right now, I'll find it. Well, part of me says, do we really need to take this part apart? And the other part of me says, of course you do you want to you're curious how this thing does what it does yep sure am so let's just let's just see if we can I guess so down below here there's a cotter pin and how does that cotter pin get in there with this how How? I don't know. Some exploratory surgery here. Well, there's a threaded thing back here that seems like it wants to come out. What is it? So it's just a plug of sorts. I'm putting all this stuff in my little tray over here and it would appear that I need to take some stuff out of here we're into some new territory for me here folks I've never done this before but there we go. What's this little shield here do? The other thing we're going to learn as we explore and take this thing apart is all the, the grease points that should be accessed on a regular basis. And obviously there's one right here in front of me. But I've noticed there's one on the side here that goes in this way. Can you, can you guys see what I'm talking about? Come on, right here. So there's a grease circle right here that goes in and... There's a channel right there. It goes up to a hole inside the bearing area right here. And that's why that bearing has that little flex piece around it so you can pump grease up in here and it'll lube the bearing. So you can actually put some decent lube to that bearing on a really regular basis. So that was kind of nice to see. And like I said, I have no idea what I'm getting into here, but we're gonna learn together. And the folks that run these things in salt water, all I gotta say is good luck. I don't think this style of outdrive is, you know, really good for a lot of salt water use unless you're able to rinse it on a regular basis, flush it out, grease it on a regular basis. You get a 
but I almost guarantee you, if you get one of these bolts, this boats this age, and try to do what I'm doing here, I don't think it's going to work. But any of you, any of you that's done it, that runs it in salt water, have one of these boats that are 50 years old and been exposed to salt water, let me know how it goes. This is a good time to leave some comments. Subscribe if you haven't already subscribed. What do we got here? Some kind of little sensor up in there. Don't know what it does. I do know it's complete junk. It's got wires going to it and I ain't gonna use it. All right, how does this come apart? Oh my goodness. What do we have here? Once I get this out, I can show you guys this stuff as if I get it out, right? Whoa! That ain't coming out very easy. This looks like a job for PB Blaster. So that's the quarter inch hex. So we can massage it with a little heat here. Sometimes you get a little heat in there and it uh, makes that aluminum grow and lets go of that bond it has. Another plug. I'm almost positive that you gotta like I can feel movement there. So if this bolt comes out, I'm pretty sure I pull this cross bolt out back here, this thing will slide right apart. Pretty pretty sure. My camera just powered off right when this happened. PB blaster and a little bit of heat for the wind. It's backing right out. Sweet. Now I'm curious when I pull this out of here, how deep did the PB blaster get? on the thread on the other side. I actually got pretty deep over here. As you can see how wet it is right here. I 
Don't look like it went in at all. But maybe the heat, you know, the heat obviously helped let it go. That thing was tight. All right, cool. I hope to goodness you guys are paying attention how this comes apart so we can put it back together. Oh my goodness. Now there are going to be a handful of you out there that don't have an Allen wrench or a hex wrench that fits that bad boy right there. It's just a plastic plug that gains you access to the bolts that are behind here. And keep in mind, behind here is supposed to stay dry. So the, this is kind of silly and scary that all that's between you and the water getting in is this piece of plastic. But take yourself a bolt. The head of the bolt fits in there, right? Then take, a, take yourself some nuts and just double nut it dun, dun, dun. you just tighten those two nuts jam them together stick this in there then you got a way to spin that bad boy right out of there now this we got to remember as i'm watching it looking at it this has got to have some sealing on it But it is a pipe thread. That's a pretty nice pipe thread, actually. You're darn right we're going to put some sealant back on here when we put it back together. Let's get the other one off the other side here. I'll show you what this is allowing me to do. Oh, yeah. That worked beautifully. It looks like this had some grease on it. And my guess is the grease was all the grease that we cleaned out of here because you couldn't even tell there was a bolt in there. So now we've got access to these two bolts, which are, looks apparently to be 5 8 maybe. We got a 5 8 here. Oh, yeah. Goodness, how tight did they tighten it? Guys, see this? What I'm doing here? I hope. Well, that, that was plenty tight. I think it's tight because it does pinch this shaft in place, holds everything down, so. Maybe a little bit of excess torque is in, is in order. That allows, it, that allows this big bolt to come right out this side hole here. Get my grip on it. Can't get at it. There we go. We'll put this together. Feels like I can put a punch right in this hole right here. And just kind of tappy tap tap it on out. Be gentle. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Whoa, don't break that. There you go. That's what, wow, spline upon spline. They don't want that going anywhere, but yeah, that's a, that's a spline and it's got to go in a certain way because there's a cross bolt here and that other cross bolt we just took out. Obviously, we're going to put this all back together with some never sleaze and Marine grease and oh my goodness, so much fun. 
And it would appear, is that how that really would work? Hmm. There's a plug that came out of here. What's that plug do? Does that spread this out? What does that do? Well, all that's left now, whoop. Only thing left to take this apart is to figure out how to get this out. And that cotter pin is part of the secret. The question is, can we give it, get it to give up its secret? But I really want to get this apart because I can thoroughly clean all this up really beautifully clean. Then I then when I start going back together, she's just, you know, gonna be awesome. Alright, what do we got what do we got what do we got going on here? What's under here? What's going on? There's a grease dirt cap on this side over here where you'd grease this part from. I really haven't seen what greases these pins so far. Where is that grease that's getting to those pivot points, huh? Can you tell me? Help me. Help me understand. Well, I think that's a Carter, cat, Carter pin from you know where. I think that big old screwdriver slot down underneath here is strictly to help you rotate it to line that Carter pin up to get it in. Hmm. I'll be back to you guys in a minute. Now this pin down here is tight. I don't know how that Carter pin is supposed to go in there when there's no, no access hole on either side to get it in there. But I had to heat this up and I heated this up pretty warm, but we got it out. Woo. I'm using all my skills tonight. That's a needle bearing in there? Are you kidding me? That is a sealed needle bearing. Well, I'll be dipped. All right. That'll sit there for now. And this was in between there. There's more shims in there. That pen is still hot. Mercy. Ouch. We've got her just about all dissected though. There's that piece. I gotta get that out of there. Some sort of sensor. I have no idea what that does. There's a lot of wires right here that look like they used to connect to this guy. If you guys know what that sensor is, let me know. Maybe it was uh, where that metal piece was in there. I don't know, was that when you trimmed up it, it hit that and let you know when you were trimmed all the way up it was a you know stop, limit. Kind of acts like it might have been some sort of limit switch. Made, made contact with this electrode device here and you know, that ain't going back on, I'll tell you that. I do all that by feel, baby. And there's another spot there that needs to be sealed up that water could get through there. Goodness. All right. So we got it apart. Now we got to do some cleanings. All right. As you can see, we've got this thing completely tore apart. The last thing I have to do really is get this hose off of here, get this sending unit out of here, get this hole plugged and, uh, 
I wonder what kind of material I'll use to plug it with uh, so I don't ever have to worry about it leaking or sick of flex. You know it. That stuff has convinced me to do what I need to do with it. Wow. Uh, the other part is down here on the floor where I had to drive the bearings. There's actually a needle bearing that goes in here and uh, two seals. And obviously this is the spot to grease it. And uh, I would have never guessed that there was needle bearings in there, a Torrington needle bearing. And uh, I happened to find the right size online. I've got that coming. And uh, there's two seals that I'm having a very hard time finding because of the size of the seals that they are and where they fit. I can find one dimension, but not the other. But we're getting very close. There's a, I'm going to do a lot of cleaning up on here to get this thing spiffy so when i put it back together with all fresh grease it's ready to rock and roll and then uh i'm actually seeing the value <laughs> i've always known the value but uh and i may have been a little neglectful on a couple of my boats where i don't do it as often as i should have or should be but i'm going to show you all the places you need to grease these on a real regular basis and uh to keep the thing alive as long as possible But yeah, that took a bit to get apart. A couple little tricks with the heat. As you can see here, this is a little discolored because I had to hit it with some heat to grow this because this was frozen in here. I'm pretty sure, and I'm gonna double check it, that this has to be clean in here. This is supposed to just slide up in here freely. This pin hole, cotter pin hole, uh, keeps it from falling out, basically, is all it does because all the pressure, when you're on the throttle and you're going, and this thing's trying to, pick the front of the boat out of the water all the pressure is right here and pivoting from up here and pressuring down here can't leverage wise and that needle bearing is the thing that keeps your steering as smooth and clean as possible so and it's always always underwater so that's where it's gonna be so important that I from now on when I'm running this thing every time I get out of the water I'm gonna have a grease gun in my car or in my tow vehicle to where I can actually pull these caps off, give them three or four shots of grease after every time I go boating, just to get fresh grease in there. Uh, the other thing you wanna make sure you use is some good marine grease. And because marine grease won't break down with water. Now I have seen some marine grease that I'm not real fond of. When it hits water, it kind of gets blocky and chunky. Uh, and in that case, I'm not sure it maintains a lot of its lubricity. I am gonna look into some uh, Amsoil marine grease. I wanna do some playing around with that uh as far as putting it in some water with my fingers messing around and see how it reacts to water because uh, things that gets blocky and chunky and maybe even breaks down a little bit it, yeah it doesn't really dissolve it and it may not mix with it. i don't know i don't know what i'm trying to say i want it to maintain some lubricity properties and i'm gonna look that up kind of like the the gear oil that i put in these out drives is a 80 or 75 w90 amsoil gear oil and i've said it a hundred times on this channel for sure that it can it says on the bottle that it can contain 10 percent contamination with water and still maintain all of its lubricity properties that's big that's big because you never know when your seal is going to go out nobody can predict that uh you never know when that fishing line is going to get wrapped around your prop shaft and eat your seals lunch and then you've got water creeping in and the worst thing can happen is you don't check your oil often enough to see if there's water in it because a lot of times it's just pull the plug see if there's any water in it and put it back and that's it you don't lose anything you just make sure there's no water uh, but when you do see the water you want to know that your oil took care of you and not just that it's time to actually work on a seal and replace a seal all righty what else is there to tell you well i've got a here i am waiting on parts for this particular project it's sitting here I've got the trailer project sitting over here with some trailer tongue, trailer chains, and that's sitting out there waiting to go. I got some parts over on my bench. I did get wheel bearings. I did get brake drums or the brake uh, assemblies, backing plate, I'm waiting for a few more pieces to show up and I can get started on putting that back together. My goodness. Over here, a little sneak peek. That's my... Uh, a TIG welder and you guys might be asking why you got a TIG welder well there's a few things that I can't buy 
in the in the size in size that I want, capacity that I want. Uh, so I'm going to be building my own, and it's going to be for Big Blue, which this is for Big Blue as well. Okay, well, we'll see if we can get some parts and see if we can start putting this thing back together because as soon as I put this back in Big Blue and seal it up, engines can start going in, outdrives can start going on, big chunks of things can start to happen to move this project along to hopefully get this boat wet this year. That's my goal is to get this boat wet this year and give it a, get, my, get this shakedown breakdown run in 2023 so that 2024 can be a what can we do with this boat and have some fun with it. All right, we'll see you when some parts arrive, but not a minute sooner, at least on this project.